Until now we had Home Assistant Blue, then Yellow and now the newest color in the family, the Home Assistant Green. But what it is? Will it last? Is it good? Should you upgrade? And how Home Assistant Green compares to other devices on the market? Let's talk about it. First, what Home Assistant Green is, in case you heard about it for the first time. It is a single board plug and play computer that comes with Home Assistant pre-installed. It has 4GB of RAM, 32GB of eMMC storage and 1.8GHz quad-core CPU. And you cannot change any of that. It costs $99 and it should be enough for 99% of the Home Assistant users in terms of performance. It comes with a nice package with the new logo and I really like that design touch. Apart from the Home Assistant Green itself, you find a LAN cable and a power supply with EU, US and UK adapters as well as a quick start guide. The Home Assistant Green device has two USB 2.0 ports type A, Gigabit Ethernet port, HDMI port for diagnostic and micro SD slot for recovery purposes. At the bottom there is a large aluminium heat sinks for noiseless CPU cooling. With all that said, it means that you'll be able to find and control only Wi-Fi enabled smart home devices out of the box. If you wish to have Matter, Thread, ZigBee, Z-Wave for Bluetooth support, you should buy some additional dongles or to use a Bluetooth proxy for the Bluetooth support. But hey, at the end of the day you may not need these additional things and Wi-Fi will be perfect for you for start. But if other protocols are a must and you want to control wider range of smart devices, then you have to buy some dongles and even USB hub because the USB ports are only two and that will add some bugs to the total cost of this device. What I like the most here is that unlike blue and yellow devices, Home Assistant Green seems a way more accessible not only in terms of the price but also from physical availability point of view. At the time of shooting this video you can actually buy green device and it should be shipped to you in a reasonable times and that was not the case with its predecessors. The blue was a limited edition that was easily accessible only if you live next door to the distributor or you're willing to pay large shipping costs and yellow was a crowd supply device where you had to wait for months to get one. Apart from the availability, there is one major difference between green and yellow Home Assistant devices. Home Assistant Yellow was designed to be upgradable. It is possible to add more RAM and storage by adding more powerful CM4 module or buying more SSD storage, where green is designed to be used as is and no further upgrades are possible. Before we move on, if you feel a bit dizzy from a lot of technical terms and acronyms that I'm using, don't worry, I got you covered with my smart home glossary, which is full of simple but useful explanations. It is coming as one big searchable PDF file and it is totally free. Get your copy now from my website https-automate-like.pro/glossary and get a flying start. Getting started with Home Assistant Green is a breeze. I just had to connect it to my router via Ethernet. I don't want to use Wi-Fi because the backbone of your smart home should use Ethernet. And then I simply had to open http homeassistant.local colon 8123 and to follow the onboarding setup process. The system will automatically detect compatible devices of my network and later I can add them from the Home Assistant settings section. Let's take a quick look at the Home Assistant Green alternatives that are available at the moment. One of the most popular options to run Home Assistant is to use a Raspberry Pi device, which is another single board computer. Raspberry Pi have different generations and the newest one is Raspberry Pi 5, and the 8 gigs of RAM version, for example, cost me 85.83 British pounds, which is around 102 dollars. Additionally, I need a power supply for it and eventually a case and either a good SD card for the storage or an USB SSD drive that will add some dollars to the total bill. There is one big remark here, there is not yet official Home Assistant release for Raspberry Pi 5. But that's perfectly fine, as there is not even official Raspberry Pi 5 units yet. The first one should be delivered this month. 
This is not the case with Raspberry Pi 4, where everything now seems smooth. There are units available worldwide, Home Assistant is running perfectly on a Raspberry Pi 4, and the prices are not much higher than Home Assistant Green. You can also try to find some Raspberry Pi 4 on the aftermarket for cheap. The only problem is that you need to put some initial efforts to run Home Assistant, as nothing is pre-installed if you choose this option. But the process is pretty straightforward and it can be performed over the network, headless and with the left hand only. Plus, you have more USB ports and a built-in Bluetooth support. Home Assistant is running even fine on the older Raspberry Pi 3 and some are running it on Raspberry Pi 2 so that is also an option. I'm not saying it is a good option, but it is an option and P3 is actually not bad. Intel new computers are also a very good option to run Home Assistant and you can go for a new or used one if you are on a budget. So, running Home Assistant these days without breaking the bank is not hard and you have plenty of options and devices at your disposal. But what if you have some of the mentioned devices already, should you buy the Home Assistant Green then? My personal recommendation is no, stay as you are unless you are coming from Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, invest the savings into some sort of self-improvement instead and treat yourself with an online or offline training like the one that I am having. More info can be found in my Home Assistant webinar to be precise in the second half of the webinar. On the other hand, if you are a new Home Assistant user and a lazy one, which is not bad thing after all, go get Home Assistant Green and thank me later about it. I am Kiryu and here is a question to think about. What will Home Assistant crew do for their new devices when they run out of colors and especially PCB board colors? Thanks for watching and until next time, bye!